Afrika Mashariki tuwezeshe kuishi kwa amani It was a full house of academicians, both teaching staff and students at Makerere University as the first deputy prime minister and minister for East African Affairs, Rebecca Kadaga, delivered a lecture enlightening them on the achievements, challenges and progress of East African community. The academicians decried the discriminatory manner in which other member states implemented the protocols on education like failure to harmonize fees and exchange programs. A few years ago, the different governments of the East African community committed themselves to free movement of students across the region. So any student of the East African region can apply to any university and be admitted. That's what the policy says and I imagine it also applies to labor. But the truth of the matter is that while universities like Makerere opened up to admit any East African student in its premier courses, like medicine, engineering, and the like, the same does, has not been reciprocated by our colleagues, particularly Tanzania and universities like Nairobi. In Tanzania, we have all these processes of nectar and nacte, which technically lock out foreigners. Because you have to be local to get a nectar number, for you to apply to get into nacte, and then apply for a slot in any Tanzanian university. And it is tied to their granting system. Given my mandate, I'm concerned about academic accreditation and recognition of uh, academic awards. Uh, in the same region, we are seeing a situation whereby we have not really harmonized and standardized the academic programs and the standards. Therefore, uh, some institutions are a little worried that uh, the merger, the integration could lead to a dilution, could lead to a diminishing of standards and compromising the integrity of academic qualifications that we offer. If he's charged here, is like three times less than the fees charged in Nairobi. So it means a Ugandan student traveling to Nairobi pays three times more than they would have paid if they stayed here. So I think there is a need to agree on some kind of harmonized fees that our students should pay across the borders. Others complain of delays on clearance and failure to recognize COVID tests from Uganda. Let me also arise or look into some other sectors like the Ministry of Health. How have you progressed with a random or uniform frameworks within the community? Like COVID testing, we were here and we came with our COVID fully vaccinated cards with our confirmation that we are free and we don't have any, but we were denied access. I mean, we, all these papers were meaningless in, this, uh, in their land. Where we can, on the list, consider theirs very... So are they seeing any... The first deputy prime minister, Rebecca Alituala Kadaga, sued the academicians of fixing the gaps. Uh, it's an area which we need to work on. There's still a lot of protectionism in each of our countries. We need to work hard to break the, those barriers, but we are working on it. There is a, a committee working on the harmonization. She, however, says the integration where it has reached is inevitable. Our coming here really, again, is coming home because you might be aware that uh, in 1922, when this university was established, it was established as a university for East Africa. It was for a long time, all the people came here. That's why you hear that uh, our late President Kibaki, the alumni, Julius Kambarage Nyerere, former president, an alumni, Ali Hassan Mwini, etc, etc. It all started here. So we are happy to associate with Makere University. This year, Makere University will be celebrating 100 years anniversary and Rebecca Kadaga is one of the alumni of the university. Philip Aguta, UBC News in Kampala. University and the University Council specifically for that gift uh, 